So if I need to be honest, what do we have in common? Statistics. Okay, so now these are notes over standard deviation. So go to your page. Nope, don't want it. Okay, go to your page 14 of your notes. Now, standard deviation. I believe you guys went over this in Math 3, but what is standard deviation? It is a type of variation. It helps us to explain variability. Here is the formula that you had to memorize last year, which you don't have to memorize now. It is the average distance from the mean, and that's the key to what standard deviation is. And that problem that I said on the prior video that we're waiting for, we're going to do together, that is an idea of what standard deviation is about. And I'll show you, we're going to do another problem that shows that also today. When it comes to standard deviation, we use that only when we're looking at the mean. Now, that's standard deviation. So here's another one. The other one is, what is variance? And variance is nothing but, let me wipe this out because that's wrong, standard deviation squared. It is, a type of, um, it is a type of variation. And as you can see, here is nothing but standard deviation squared. And here is the formula. Another formula that you'll be given that you don't have to use. But even better than that, it's in our calculator. Now, when it comes to things that we need to know about standard deviation, we need to know that it measures variability. Well, we talked about that in the relationship to the mean. Okay, so I just mentioned that. It is not resistant to outliers, meaning if you have an outlier or an extreme value, just like the mean, X bar is affected by outliers the standard deviation is also affected by outliers, so it is not resistant. It's a measure of spread, again, around the mean. That's the same thing I said here, just saying it in a different way. Here's something that's interesting. If we have a standard deviation of zero, that means we have all the same values. So if I took a group of 16-year-olds and try to find out what's their average age is going to be 16. How much variability is it? None. They're all 16. So that's why I'm saying if the standard deviation is zero, that means we have all the same values. Also something that I should have noticed or made note of somewhere, that right here, this is not just, here is your symbol for standard deviation of the sample and that is of the sample, because there is another standard deviation for the population. And the last property that I want to mention about standard deviation is that whatever your standard deviation is of a given data set and the mean of the given data set, it has to be in the same units. Meaning, you can't take the standard deviation when it's in Celsius and then the mean is in Fahrenheit. Or if one is in kilometers and the other one is in miles. So you've got to be consistent. Standard deviation for both miles, mean for the miles, etc. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, but I just wanted to put it out there. Now, as we are comparing measure of spread, okay, and we're looking at the idea of we can do a comparison between the standard deviation and the IQR. So first of all, what are they both? They're both measurements of central tendency. What is that saying? They me they're both measure spread. And measures of central, central tendency are also your mean and your median. But here, this measure of cent central tendency is talking about your measure of spread. Also, another thing that shows when they're different is that we use standard deviation when I'm looking at the mean. And then I use the IQR when I am comparing the median. And remembering again, the standard deviation is saying it's taking into account all the values. So 
all of the individual values relationship to the mean, whereas the IQR is just talking about the middle 50% of the data when it's in order. So those are the, um, the differences between standard deviation and IQR. One last thing in terms of the notes before we do problem number 96. And I know um, here choosing the summary statistic, again, this also works. I just didn't want to repeat myself down here. When you have, you use a standard deviation with the mean, you use the IQR with the median. But also, you use an IQR with skewed data or when you have a strong outlier. Why is that? Remember, you tell, you tell me. Yep, you're right. Because your IQR is resistant to outliers or extreme values. Outliers here, extreme values would be the skewness, the skewed data. So this is the reason that you use the IQR. And again, don't forget which two go together. Okay, now I want you guys to read number... 98. I said 96, so oopsie, 98. And now let's see what the heck this is talking about. So pause, read it. We need to find the deviation of each observation from the mean. So we're trying to see how each is away from the mean. We want to find the square of the deviation and then find the variance in the standard deviation given the values of 7, 7, 9, and 9. So I made a little chart. You might want to make a chart too. But let me explain what this means. Deviate is, when you have a deviation, you're saying it's slightly different. So here are the values of x. I can actually refer to this x sub i, and sub i is just saying x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4. I have that. Now I want to find out the deviation away from the mean. So here that's each observation minus the mean, each observation minus the mean, each observation minus the mean, because I found that the mean was 8. Next, what did they ask me to, to do? They said to square the deviation. So here I squared it. And now they're asking me to find the variance and the standard deviation. So that's a 1, that's a 1, that's a 1, that's a 1. So the numerator is nothing but 4 divided by 4 minus 3. Remember that formula is this. So remember this is your formula and this is for the variance. And that formula is the same as this. Now these formulas are the same, they're both variance. And that's all I've done right here. Here, that summation means you take all of those and I add them up. And here, remember that x sub i, that's x sub i, not x sub 1, is just each piece of data. So here's the variance. Now, in order to find the standard deviation, you blink, you miss. So all I've done is to take off my square. And now, here is the formula for the square root. So with that being said, as you look at your work right here, that's where the answer comes from be 1.15. But you know what? I want you guys to put that in your calculator and tell me what your calculator says. Because trust me, I know you guys are looking at this, like, oh man, do I have to do every problem like this? No, the only reason I have you guys doing this is simply because multiple choice question know what this means, what this formula represents. And remember, you're given the formula, but you're still not going to have to crank it out. You're going to have to, you just need to know what the formula represents. So go ahead, put it in your form, in your calculator. I have mine in my L2. Okay, I'm at my, so remember, I'm going to stat first, first variable. Here, I'm going to change this to L2 by pressing second to calculate, calculate, and look what you have right there, standard deviation. So drop the mic, drop the marker. Okay, so that's it for the notes. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bring your books 
or photos, whatever you need to bring. Bye-bye.